Former Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu is called in for 15 long hours of questioning for his role in the Sung Wan Jong bribery list scandal. Shots fired over the Yellow Sea as North Korea holds a second straight day of artillery training. The South has urged the North to put an end to the drills. And following hundreds of reports, the Korea Consumer Agency recommends people avoid a popular health supplement which could contain dangerous toxins. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Friday, May 15th. I'm Luke Clary. Former Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu was summoned for questioning by prosecutors. His name appeared second on a list of eight written on a memo left behind by the late businessman Sung Wan Jong after committing suicide. The former Prime Minister only returned home after 15 hours of questioning. Former Prime Minister Lee Wan Gu went through 15 hours of questioning at the prosecutor's office Thursday as a suspect in the Song Wan Jong bribery list scandal. He left the office at around 1 a.m. Friday. He also responded to reporter questions on whether he separately met with the late Song, who headed Gangnam Enterprises. 독대 무슨 뭐 이런 것은 기억을 못 합니다. 사실 그 선거 와중에. Prosecutors grilled the former prime minister on whether he received over $27,000 from the late businessman during campaigning for re-election as lawmaker, but he is known to have strongly denied the charge. He also reportedly said that he knows nothing about the allegation that he tried to win over witnesses. Prosecutors will analyze his testimony and, through further probe, will determine his indictment sometime next week. Over a hundred shots rang out as North Korea held artillery training near the northern limit line on the LOC for the second straight day. The South Korean military authorities defined the firing drill as a threat. And urged the North to stop the training. The South Korean military reported that North Korea fired some 190 shots from naval vessels and coastal areas to waters north of the northern limit line near Yeonpyeong Island. The live fire drill started at around 7:10 p.m. on Thursday and lasted for roughly two hours and 30 minutes. No shells fell on the South Korean side of the sea. North Korea had fired some 130 shots on the sea near Pyongyang Island on Wednesday night as well. The North had unilaterally announced that it had designated the areas north of the NLL as a firing zone and held back-to-back -back nighttime firing exercises near South Korea's Pyongyang and Yeonpyeong Islands. The South Korean military believes that North Korea intended to show off its nighttime operation capacity by holding firing drills at night. 북한의 야간 포사격을 이번에 한 것을 위협적인 행동이다라고 판단하고 The South Korean military is maintaining its readiness for additional firing since the North had set the exercise period until midnight Friday. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's reign of terror has resulted in a series of purges of close officials, making analysis of the regime's power structure all the more difficult. Some pundits say that the constant reshuffle of rank and order is inciting more instability. North Korean Defense Minister Hyun Young Char is the latest victim in North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's purge of close senior officials. Along with Hyun, Han Guangsang, Pyeon In-sun, and Ma Won-chun, who were close aides appointed by the leader himself, were also purged in recent days. In his early days of power, Kim executed his guardian figures like his uncle Chang Sung-tek. From last year, he focused on eliminating any traces of his uncle's lingering shadow, and most recently, the young leader has begun to purge those in his own circle. His latest reign of terror is instead based on the agencies that are growing in power, namely the State Security Ministry and the Organization Guidance Department of the ruling Workers' Party. 
Since Chang's execution, Kim Won Hong, the state security ministry chief, and Cho Yun Jun, vice director of the organization guidance department, have earned renewed trust from Kim Jong Un and are orchestrating the latest purges. On the propaganda front, Ri Jae-il, first director of the Workers' Party's propaganda department, is believed to have taken on the role of the elderly Kim Gi-nam. North Korea remains silent on the South Korean National Intelligence Service's announcement of the execution of its defense minister. On Thursday, its state-run television continued to air documentaries without removing the images of the late Hyun Young Char, Pyun Yin Sun, and Ma Won Chun from the scenes. The Korea Consumer Agency has received hundreds of reports about complications from ingesting health supplements containing cyanamide Will 40, a widely used ingredient in Korean traditional medicine. The Korean Society of Toxicology has issued a recommendation not to take health products containing a similar-looking cyanamide auriculatum, which may be toxic. The Korea Consumer Agency has so far received roughly 400 complaints regarding adverse side effects from taking health supplements containing cyanamide Will 40. The flood of complaints started two weeks ago on April 22nd when authorities announced that fake cyanamide Will 40 was used in some health products. Out of the 400 complaints, 35 percent claimed that treatment in hospitals was required for damage to the liver, digestive disorders, and nervous system anomalies. However, the KCA has postponed announcing any details about the complications over concerns that doing so may lead to a consumer panic. Experts project that it would be highly difficult to prove that the complications experienced by consumers rose from ingesting the fake Sinantium Will 40 products. This is because it is unclear how much of marketed health supplements contain the similar-looking Sinantium auriculatum, which may be toxic. The Korean Society of Toxicology advised consumers not to take the controversial health supplements until a final conclusion is made, given that it is difficult to determine the toxicity and safety of Sinantium auriculatum based on the materials available. An official in charge of painting Sungne Moon City Gate, a national treasure, during the restoration project there has been indicted under arrest for his poor workmanship. Repairs of the city landmark are inevitable, but reconstruction is expected to cost over $3.6 million. The Sungnaemun Gate, first on the list of South Korea's national treasures, was destroyed in a 2008 fire. It was restored after five years, but poor construction work immediately caused controversy. The paint was coming off in about 500 areas of the structure. A probe by the Board of Audit and Inspection found that the entire restoration was a total mess. In the latest development, the prosecution indicted the man surnamed Hong who was in charge of painting and coloring the gate. Hong holds the title of Intangible Cultural Heritage for Tancheng, the traditional decorative painting style. He's charged with stealing some 550,000 U.S. dollars from the construction cost by using imported chemical pigments mixed with adhesive agents in painting the gate, instead of going the traditional way which was agreed upon earlier. Over $25 million and 15,000 workers went into the five-year, three-month Sungnaemun restoration project to reinstate the national treasure. Now, the painting work must be redone at an additional cost of some $3.8 million. Police have arrested a man in his 50s for stealing bicycles parked in alleys or on the streets. The thief turned out to be an owner of a bicycle shop selling bicycles by day and stealing them by night. Late at night, a man loiters around bicycles parked on the street. After looking around, he removes tools out of a bag and expertly takes apart the lock. 
This man who walked away with a stolen bicycle turned out to be a 55-year-old man surnamed E, who has been running a bicycle shop for 15 years. He has been selling bicycles by day and stealing them by night. The stolen bikes range from children's bicycles with training wheels to pricey mountain bikes. The stolen bicycles were sold at half the prices of used bicycles on the market. Police believe that most of the 200 bicycles sold at a shop are stolen goods. 한 장소에서 15년간 그 자전거 판매 업소를 운영을 했기 때문에 주변에서는 싸게 자전거를 그살수 있다고 어 소문도 난것 같습니다. Bicycle theft is on the rise as the number of cycling enthusiasts increases throughout Korea. Young Buddhist monks from all over the nation got together to play soccer ahead of Buddha's birthday coming up later this month. Take a look. A soccer game is underway in front of a Buddhist temple adorned with colorful lanterns. The players are child monks with newly shaven heads. The child monks came from various parts of the nation to hold the soccer competition. And try their best to score a goal. Many of them never played soccer before, so they're constantly stumbling and tripping. <laughs> Some carry the ball in their hands. Others form a wall in front of the goal to block the opponents. When it comes to soccer, even monks become ambitious. After the fierce competition, they become friends in no time. Entering the monastery only a month ago, the children became monks at a very tender age. Their happy and innocent smiles brighten Buddhist temples nationwide. Videos are widely used in contemporary art. Some artistic videos impress with their outstanding quality and are, in fact, hard to distinguish from movies. Take a look. Director Im Hung Soon's documentary film Factory Complex deals with the issue of female labor in Asia. Interviews about the harsh reality of the labor market make the film appear to be a movie. But its experimental and bold video images make it look more like a work of art, helping it stand out from conventional films. Factory Complex won the Silver Lion Award at the Venice Biennale. It is highly unusual for a movie to win an award at one of the world's most prestigious art exhibitions. 영화도 아니고 미술도 아닐 수도 있고 영화이기도 하고 미술일 수 있는 그런 경계 작업이라고 할수 있습니다. Artistic videos these days are becoming lengthier and even have plots much like movies. They are sometimes screened in theaters and put on display in art galleries. Video art is increasingly blurring the boundaries between art and cinema, gradually expanding the realm of art and breathing fresh life into cinematography. Ancient palaces in Seoul have become beautiful tourist attractions as well as places for relaxation and contemplation for city dwellers. Let's take a special walk amongst the old palaces infused with nostalgia. Gyeongbuk Palace, which translates to enjoy a great fortune, has stood in the middle of Seoul as the Joseon Dynasty's main royal residence for some six centuries. Visitors can also see for themselves the age-old backdrops they've only seen in TV shows. This is Gyeongedu Pavilion, where Joseon kings and his officials enjoyed parties and received foreign dignitaries. Starting this year, the inside of Gyeongedu Pavilion will be open to visitors over a period of several months, from May to October. But visitors must reserve their places in advance. Also, visitors must take off their shoes before entering the pavilion, and foreigners are no exception. 
It's a good idea. We don't take off our shoes very often in England. <laughs> The king used to sit on a higher platform with the officials seated below. The colorful decorations on the ceiling suggest how much the Joseon royalties enjoyed beautiful surroundings. 동시 연회 장소로도 쓰였고 일식이나 혼례 시 외국서 영접 이후에 큰 연회를 개최하던 곳이고. When gazed upon from the pavilion's upper floor, the roofs of the palace buildings look like a rolling black wave. The wire mesh covering the windows is called bushi, which used to be made with strings in the Joseon period. Changdeok Palace is another charming royal residence open to the public. Having endured the passing of time for six centuries, the palace captivates today's visitors with its moonlight tour program. Guided by red and blue lanterns, visitors follow the moonlit path to enter the palace's rear garden. They enjoy the silvery moonlight at Buyongji Pond and Juamnu Pavilion, which supposedly embody the most beautiful features of Korean gardens. Ancient palaces still retain the traces of the kings and queens who occupied them hundreds of years ago. These peaceful palace grounds are the perfect place for an outing this spring weekend. And now let's take a look at the markets, followed by the world weather. And that's it for this edition of News Today. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.